Hey there, I just built this scene to show how Text Mesh Pro can handle a large amount of text. So what I've got here is uh, I'm running Unity 5.3 with the latest release of Text Mesh Pro, which is available on the user forum. Um, I've got a simple scene with a scroll rect uh, and basically a Text Mesh Pro object. In terms of the text, uh, I've got basically the Unity 5 license agreement or part of it. Uh, it's uh, over 15,000 characters or about 2,500 words. Uh, as you may know or may not know, there's a limit in Unity in terms of how many vertices a mesh can have, which is 65,535 since each character is four vertices. We can have about you know 16,000 something characters on screen at once uh, per mesh or per text object. But it's a large amount of text as you can see here anyway. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just play around with some of the properties on the text object just to show how it behaves given that we have lots of text. You know, obviously I can turn on bold, uh, make the text italic, put everything underline uh, or everything have a strike through. I can play with the alignment. So let's left align the text, center, right, or justified, which is flush on both ends. I can even play with the blending of the character spacing or word spacing to fill in uh, the justified text. Kerning is enabled, so I can enable kerning and disable kerning. You can see kerning in the case of this text uh, does have a big effect because it's you know it's legal stuff, a lot of capital letters, and there's a lot of kerning there. Anyway, uh, I can for fun go here and uh, zoom out and grab the rect transform and resize it and it's doing justification on the text as I'm resizing it and as you can see it's like very responsive let me undo this and now let me build this scene so we can look at it but before I do that let's just click on our viewport and enable the 2d rect mask so we can have masking going on as you just saw there so now let's uh, build our scene. So build, I'm gonna build a debug version so we can take a look at the profiler. And we're just gonna wait for it. And we're gonna run it. And we're gonna first play with it, then we'll look at the profiler. So I'm running uh, Camtasia right now to record the video. Uh, Camtasia is capped at 30 frames per second. So it's not always smooth, but uh, it should still be pretty good. So as you can see, we have our large amount of text here. Uh, if I just move the mouse and let it scroll, uh, you can see it's like totally smooth and fluid. Unlike bitmap text where you would have to use uh, for the text to render nicely, you'd have to use pixel perfect. The problem with pixel perfect is it would adjust the pixel position and as you scroll it starts to stutter and it looks horrible. The advantage of using text mesh pro and the sign distance field is that it's always sub pixel accurate so there's no need for pixel perfect type stuff and when you're scrolling and moving the text around it's always going to be smooth and super nice. Now let's take a look at our profiler and basically uh, let me move this up here so we can see everything so text mesh pro when you mess with the text object itself uh, you're gonna see it in the canvas and will render canvas because in this case it's a canvas object and it shows up there what you'll notice if I go back to the scene and I move this around is regardless of what I do this thing doesn't really change much that's simply because the text is static um, any spikes that you're seeing in the profiler are basically a result of Unity's scroll rect scrolling around and moving the rect transform and all that stuff. Text Mesh Pro is basically doing nothing. So this is more an exercise in uh, the shader itself to see how it can render the text. Uh, but as far as the CPU and Text Mesh Pro is concerned, it's doing nothing here. Because um, again, there's nothing going on with the text. We're not dynamically changing it. Uh, and if we were, uh, we can still handle that. Obviously, you wouldn't want to change all, you know, every single 15,000 characters. So there's different ways to handle this, uh, to handle that efficiently. But in this example, this amount of text is irrelevant because it's all static text that we're scrolling around. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I guess what I could do is kill this um, and just 
diverge here from what I wanted to show and find uh, let's see I've saved that scene just make sure I don't mess up my stuff in case I need to re-record uh, let's just go to my example scenes and just find a scene here like script example and run this thing just make sure it does what I want it to do okay so it's just a timer with numbers on screen but these are being updated every single frame um, so if I stop this and build it uh, wrong place and this time we're gonna take a look at the profiler So now the text is being updated every single frame. Now I'm not using a canvas in this example, I'm using the normal mesh renderer. But if I was to go to the renderer and the fire on pre-render, this is where the text is actually being rendered. So if I go back to it and let it run, you can see that it's hovering between point zero something and actually I've got frame sync on right now, so I should have not done that, so let me uh, kill this, go back to quality settings, and disable this so we can let it run as fast as the machine can run it. So basically the, the GFX wait for the V-Sync was consuming the most amount of time. Uh, now if I run the same scene with that and we look at the same uh, stuff, uh, let me find it here, camera render, expand it. So in this case, if we look at it, it's hitting 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.04. So as you can see, it's like super efficient. And if you were to do the same thing with UI text, uh, basically it would be about twice the amount of time that Text Mesh Pro takes. So that's it for this, uh, this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks.